lost your virginity in a train? <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. yeah it's like at the same it. time? Like a real Toronto man. It's so like, like, what are the, the difference between the brown Asians and the white Asians? Well, you got to go with the eyes for sure. Yeah, yeah. That is the first difference, I would say, yeah. Yeah, and the second would be 10 out of 10, the smell. <laughs> 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 Who do you think contributed the A to the nyay? A white boy going in there saying A all the time. That's that white boy twang. Be a white boy summer for the next four <laughs> years, boys. <laughs> Episode 11 of the Wave and Muzzy. You know what I'm saying? Live here at B3 Studios. Welcome back. I am one of your hosts, DJ Zar, a.k.a. The Muzzy. I'm DJ Natural Wave. You already know most viral DJ. Haven't posted in a year. They haven't caught up to me yet. Let's go. They're pissed. I see I see you getting at all these other DJs talking about, yo, they haven't been able to catch up. Because I've been looking at the numbers, you know, and I'm just like, <laughs> the, the numbers are shit. <laughs> well, speaking of numbers, but not shit. Mm. We got cringe Kevin to build in. She, she, she's. Yo, Wagwan, Wagwan. Wagwan. Why isn't this guy posting? He's probably got more followers than all of us combined. He does. It's, it's kind of disrespectful. He has a quarter million <laughs> followers on TikTok, bro. But because we don't get paid from it, like I kind of lost the motivation to do it. You know what I mean? Like, mm. buddy, buddy got a hundred thousand followers, and he's like, "I'm not wearing a poppy anymore." Whoa. <laughs> that's, Let's that's, talk that's, about it, bro. <laughs> Uh, why are we not wearing poppies? I'll start with you, you. people. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so have veterans were they fighting for me or were they fighting for y'all? First of all, I'm an immigrant, <laughs> so like I'm still trying to figure out this country. Were they fighting for black people, Kev? They fought for the right for Indian international students to come and poop on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why we stormed the beaches Ma <laughs> Ma <laughs> <laughs> Normandy. The beach. <laughs> and that is true. If you are Canadian, whether you're black, white, Hispanic, Asian, I guess they did fight for all Canadians, you know? It's true. <laughs> it's Even true. the ones that weren't here yet. Exactly. <laughs> you know, I don't really think about Remembrance Day until like the, everyone has that like one white friend who's like grandparents fought. Mm. And then you're like, oh, shoot, like. Okay, I respect that. I should be wearing a poppy, you know? Yo, some man's been going to like veterans and they didn't really fight for real. Honestly, my ancestors <laughs> actually fought in World War II. Oh, shit. For the Germans. Oh, <laughs> actually, or no? I kind of nah. believe it. <laughs> I'm, I'm Polish. I'm oh, Polish. you're Polish. They, they, we were oh. victims. Oh, yeah, yeah. I actually had a great uncle. He died. Real story in a concentration camp. No way. Really sad story. Uh, Workplace injury, but <laughs> <laughs> oh my, wait, wait. So are you guys? Are you guys Jewish? <laughs> nah, 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 nah. We're clean. We're clean. <laughs> we're clean. No, no. Crazy. Honestly, we did an ancestry test. My grandma had like point like one percent, point like oh point one percent like of a Jewish, and she's like, oh, that's a good one. That's like that. <laughs> so I think that like point oh oh one percent. My last name is Barrett, and there's so many Barretts around. I just imagine like the Barrett Plantation must have been lit back in the days, though. You know what I mean? <laughs> like it must have been because I could imagine some plantation. There's only like a few slaves on it. There's no shatties. Yeah. You know what I mean? I feel like the Barrett Plantation is pure tings. You know what I mean? Like the master. Like it wasn't really too harsh and shit. A couple of light skinned tings on the <laughs> daughter that had a little uh, mix up. The high school they, rebellion. They kept the back door open to sneak in the crib one time. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> You know what I feel like happened way more than they like to give credit for? I feel like a lot of the wives were banging the slaves. Mm. And like they Definitely. make it see a lot of times they make it seem like a, and a like lot of guys watching. A lot of guys watch. I guarantee it was a cuck history situation. of cuckolding. Mm. Slavery and cuckolding probably is ties. I just got back on dating sites and the amount of like slightly chubby, not attractive white women that have been liking me. Yeah, fat white. I can just imagine all like the fat white wives back in the day that were just like on the slaves, like, oh, you have to f me, man, dingo. My bad for this word. But like, okay. oh, yeah, you have to, oh, I want the bear back, the real bear back. <laughs> but do you think like the slave owners, like, do you feel like at first they were kind of not happy about it? And then they were like, okay, you know what? Since she really wants it, like, let me embrace it. Or do you feel like they were like, they didn't care about their wives. So it's like, whatever, you can, you can bang him. I feel like the fat white woman loved it. Yeah. You know, like that's got to be something there. Like, look at his <laughs> algorithm. <He's> like, <laughs> They're probably all those fat chicks, and they're like, you know what? What happened? My question is, what happened with the light skinned kids? 
Like, do they get full slave? Do they kind of like upgrade to the house? They upgrade to the house. No, is that, is that like the history? Like, what? There probably is a protocol. There's still kids, one drop, right? There's, they, there's still a one drop yeah, rule. There's a one drop rule. So they what don't have. Mean? They're not a full person it's legally. Like, <laughs> in that the case. one drop rule is like, even if you have a pinch of black in you, you're still black. So like they an go eighth. full, but like, you, like that's your son too. Like, put yourself in the in uh, the 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 owner, the business owner. The wait, wait, do you have kids? Do I have kids? Yeah. Uh, I have a puppy. No, okay, okay. Because, <laughs> no, like, I don't have kids either. But there are guys who, like, literally disown their kids type shit. Like, if they have it with a woman who they don't really want to have it with or, like... You know what I mean? Like, there's so many, like, deadbeat dads out here who, but like... W- would you, like, let them just free out the back and be like, have a chance at life, kiddo, you know? You're no good here, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Get drafted first round in the NBA, Yo. kiddo. Yo, this is crazy way to start the fire. This so. is great. This is great. <laughs> you know what I love? Um, there's always that, like, racist white grandpa, but when he sees the light-skinned kid, there's just all these, like, NFL, NBA, like, thoughts in his head, and all of a sudden, he's super invested. He's going to every game. Yeah, yeah, he's, like, yeah. doing stretching exercises with the kids. Like, those are my favorite type of old white racists, the one that, like, embrace... The athleticism, they're like, oh, like the extra fast twitch joint in his knee now. Like, you know, See, those are the mats from Get Out that like um, they just go for the big buff mans and shit. <laughs> they're like, that's a strong one. <laughs> no, literally. So, OK, in the same way that fat white women are attracted to black men, who do like like white dudes attract? Asian women. Asian women. Asian women for sure. Is that where you get like the most bang for your buck as a white guy is with an Asian woman? No pun. Yeah, there's a reason we're going out to Thailand. We're going out to Philippines. Shout out to the Tita's out there. We, we got to go anywhere, anywhere where their eyes are shaped. The white Asians, that is. <laughs> white. Oh, so you're talking there's more like... There's two types of Asians, I like to say. There's the white Asians and then the bra- black Asians, brown Asians, you know? That's crazy. Like the Filipinos, pretty much. No, no, Indonesians? no. Like Indians. They're technically Asian. Oh, okay, okay. There's yeah, literally yeah. white I said, Asians. Indians is nigga Asians. That's they are. I'm learning, they, I'm learning something. I didn't new. say the word, bro. I didn't say the word. <laughs> we know what you meant, though. I got it. I got it. But you know what I mean? Like, yeah. just like the other Okay, so like, like, what are the, the difference between the brown Asians and the white Asians? Well, you got to go with the eyes for sure. Yeah, yeah. That is the first difference, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, and the second would be 10 out of 10 the smell. <laughs> <laughs> The cooking, you know, you can tell the difference in the cooking. The cooking. You're not saying the smell is bad. You're just saying there is a different smell between. You walk into the households. One has different aromas. Yeah, no, exactly. Can I be honest? Like, it's this is gonna sound weird, but Asian sweat doesn't really have like an odor. Which Asian? White Asian or? I'm saying other Asian. White Asian Filipino. Oh, it's a Mexican Asian. Yeah, is that like brown (laughs) Asian? (laughs) That's like spicy Asian. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um, where do you rank in terms of, I mean, I know, I know, you know, you got your situation, but in terms of like the white Asians, like where do you rank them attractiveness wise? Like white Asians, like yeah. the hybrids? No, like, like, like Korean, Chinese, like, oh, like the white Asians. Oh, my I bad. think they're called South, South, South Asian or South Asians. One of them, Southeast Asians. Oriental is what our grandparents probably would have called them back yeah. in the day, but I don't know. That's, that's not even a word we're allowed to use. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I would go Filipino number one, but not for food because my girl's Filipino, half Filipino. So, you know, shout out Salamat to the Filipinos <laughs> for making her. Um, and then I think you really got to go to the, I, I really like the tanned Asians, you know, like those countries, like the Thailand, Vietnams, you know, I feel like they got good food. Yeah. Like Japanese is like, you know, they're going to be racist. The parents aren't going to like it. Even as a white guy out there, I don't even think, you know, like they're like the ones that like still are like, nah, you guys. <laughs> yeah. Chinese would be interesting, but like, I also feel like there's going to be a bit of like a stuck upness to the Chinese. We're like, I feel like those, those Southern not South Asians, but Southern white Asian countries, they're going to be more <laughs> humble about it. Yeah, I feel like we're grateful. Cause... They're going to be grateful for you. For like what? Like your genetic imprint? Yeah, they just like got brainwashed to love whites, I guess. So they're just going to be way more about that life. Have you, how have you been perceived by black women throughout your life? Like, do you do well? Or is, has that <laughs> been like a weird thing? I lost my virginity to a lovely black woman. Shout out Aisha. Um, how do you feel about that? Aisha. How do you feel about that? I don't feel no, yeah. I don't feel nothing about the stickers virginity. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Beautiful. Black, like your people. A beautiful black queen in Oshawa, Ontario. Oh, in Oshawa? In the <laughs> Shore? Oh. Yeah, yeah, you can have them things so no show no shatties don't even identify as black and shit. Yeah. Yeah, probably not, yeah. Just just skates the lie. Honestly, I didn't even really know where it was uh She had like the, the dinosaur 
<laughs> I've ascend statuses and stuff. The, you know, like the emo haircut. Did she the- wear DCs? Be honest. <laughs> yeah, there we go. I met this girl one time. <laughs> For real. It was that night. So it was. Oh, like, she was a oh. hoe. Mm-hmm. Okay, come on. Why you do it? Shati, you have to make us look a little bit better than that. You can't be for man. It was an Oshawa. It wasn't a black thing. It was an Oshawa thing. It was an Oshawa uh, thing. Yeah, you okay, know okay. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the Shwa, like, everyone was just giving it up. Something in the water there. Something in the water. Yeah. yeah. Me and my, you showed up Adam, my, bo- my boy, he was there with me. You know, we, uh, we you guys do, did we, we it together? Did, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, you lost your virginity <laughs> in a train? <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. yeah it's like, like at the same it. time? Like a real Toronto man. Okay, in like Ottawa. the tower? Yes. That is crazy. Shout out to the homies. So she the was what she was what experienced? Was she experienced? Yeah, yeah. Based off I don't know, I wasn't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All I remember is Lil Wayne Drake's I'm going in was playing MGZ. You know that? I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whole I'm going I'm in. Whole <laughs> and it was uh I, I didn't even enjoy the experience. I was just more happy to get off my chest, you know? Like you're like, yeah. oh, I'm not a virgin, but thank God. How Why old were you? Like grade eleven, probably. Why say. didn't you enjoy the experience? Like it was literally just one of those things you're like we're so hanging fast. out with our boys and then they're like he's like, Oh, this girl wants to get like dub teamed. Who wants to come? And the one guy's like, ah, I don't know. Like, not in the mood tonight. And I'm like, I'm a virgin. And they're like, you know what? Get in there. Like, <laughs> you know, let's, get, let's get rid of that tonight. And it was just like. You're up, bud. Yeah. And she was nice, you know, and shout out her. So you never attached any type of like meaning to like your first time. Like, I remember for me, it was like, I just wanted my first time to mean something. And then after that, I knew it was just going to be like. This guy wanted game. his first time to be special. It you? was special. I felt like five first times. <laughs> 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 like their first time? Yeah, so, yeah, oh. yeah, you know? It's my guy's first a, time, babe. The guy's a cherry popper, right? Eh? No, no, no. It's uh that he was li- you're lighting saying it was your first time to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I think that. <laughs> that is mud. I've been saving myself for you, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Next night, new girl. I've been saving myself for you, honey. I should try that at 30. <laughs> Well, no girl say, would find that attractive, realistically, at 30. Th- that is true. <laughs> what, what have you been doing wrong yeah. for 30 years while you have not? But I, I feel like there are some cougars who would just want to do it on some power trip, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, oh, like, you've never been with a woman. Let, like, let me, like, show you I feel like you once whatever. you hit 25, you kind of lose that, that. Like, the appeal of being yeah, a virgin. Yeah. <laughs> You're just a weird you. <laughs> is there ever an age where women lose the appeal of being a virgin? Nah. Nah, yeah, I think like once you hit menopause, it's pretty embarrassing. If it does eggs dry up, you're like, God damn, <laughs> what okay. a waste. We have two white men here. I have to ask you guys Did white men's fall off in the past, what, 10 years, 15 years? No, white boys up. Shout out Trump 2024. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna be honest. I feel like right now we're we're on the way up again. Like I feel like we fell off for a while. Like, I, I agree. Trump's bringing them back. I'm Trump, telling you, Trump's bringing you guys back. I, I don't even support Trump, but like Trudeau brought in the with the black people phase with the black face, and it was cool <laughs> while it lasted. Mm-hmm. But we got Pierre Polyev coming in now. People yeah, gonna wear poppies again. Yo, the Trump and Pierre like one two punch is gonna be mud, fam. Buddy, they're gonna fuck us either way. Let's be real. <laughs> they're, they're not actually gonna save the day. The Canadian dollar is the lowest it's ever been right now. Yeah, I, I mostly think of all this stuff as political theater, and that like there's some kind of like puppetry going yeah, on behind too. the scenes. And this is all just like what we could be Anunnaki. That's what I think. But Anunnaki, yeah, those are like types. I of know. Aliens. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. Let's go. Oh, we could go down that rabbit hole, bro. Honestly, we- though, like if aliens are out there, why wouldn't they have stopped all the bad things that have happened? Why are they just allowing it? Because they, but why would they stop? It? Maybe they're not righteous or they don't have any like moral inclination to see us thrive, you know? But like what we consider bad, they might not consider bad. If you look at just like an, the animal environment, like that's like us saying, oh, it's bad that the lions are going and killing off and eating whatever prey they have. Yeah. And like, why would we go stop that? That's like the ecosystem, you know? That's just like what happens. Yeah, I feel like there needs to be rich, there needs to be poor, there needs to be like. There needs hierarchy. to be in Israel, there needs to be a Palestine. It's just nature. That's what you're saying. <laughs> That's what you're saying. <laughs> you're saying. Um, I, just put I wouldn't say that this would be Israel and Palestine war, but I do feel like war is human nature. There's always going to be war. Facts. You know what I mean? Like I try to set you up. I'm <laughs> that. <laughs> no, that's fine. That's fine. I'm used to white man trying to set me up. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shout out, Grandpa. Nothing new under the sun. Nothing new (laughs) under the sun. Oh, man. But this is why I like having comedians on here, you know, because certain, like, artists we have, like, kind of have to, like, walk on eggshells when you're talking to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Even when I listen to the Joe Rogan podcast and his comedians on, they just be letting it fly and yeah. shit, you know? What, you gotta, you gotta. What got you into comedy? Honestly, like, once they started really tightening down on who could use the N-word, I was like, <laughs> there's got to be pushback here. We're going to have a bit of pushback. <laughs> but, uh, It's no. slur for slur, cracker. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm not going to slur for slur. <laughs> we can go slur for slur. Yeah. That's something me and my white friends do. <laughs> Yo, I'll never forget the first time I chill with like, my white friends. And keep in mind, like at this point, I'm like a rapper. I'm super like pro-black. And I remember the first time I chill with these white dudes and like they were freely dropping it. But they're not anti-black. They're probably. not. They're just like that word. And they're like, oh, look at this N-word. But like. And I don't hate black people. Like, it would be one of those. That's pretty racist. I'm not thinking about it. That's not it. It was bad. It was like, I showed them a video of Michael Jackson dancing. And they're like, yo, that's some N-word, like, ish, you know? Well, and I was like, oh, shit. my God. That's fair, though. That is fair, <laughs> that's a, I thought you meant, like, they were saying on some racist shit. But, like, they see a white boy moving like that. Like, that can't be, you know, white boy shit. One thing I do sure. want to say is I'm glad white mans have their own slang now and shit. I was on the go train the other day. There's, like, pure, like... I want to say young 20 white men are going to the Leafs game. And then I'm hearing the conversation and shit. It's right? called English. <laughs> <laughs> no, they haven't. Yeah, it, oh, they, they, this guy. They, they did invent the language. <laughs> no, they have their own slang. Like, what listen, is the slang? Listen, like, <laughs> listen. He's like, yeah. oh, I was um, I was with my dad and his buds, and they're just uh, chirping the boys, and we had a few brews, and, yeah. and I'm like, okay, these are the like chirping buds, brews, like you hockey, know? hockey yeah. slang. I think. Yeah, you exactly. see, they're going in for the Leafs game. It's the only time you see them come into the city. No, like, literally, literally, fam. That in the Jays game in the <laughs> summer. I'm always so shocked at how many white people live in the city during like a Leafs game because I'm like, where are you guys? Like, all of a sudden, there's fifty thousand of you here, That's but like, thing. I never see y'all. They don't live in the city. If you go on the go train. They're all going like OT, fam, and mm. they just come in droves. They come in droves. Like the all you see is green from the uh, go train, and then white and blue from the Leafs jerseys. Like, Jeez, but honestly, your guys' experience in the city, what race is the most racist? Based on Toronto's a true melting pot, you know, where we really get to see a bit of every race. What guys? What do you guys think? If you had to pick, what demographic that you say Chinese? I Okay. They do be shopping at a Chinese grocery store. Do feel racist. <laughs> it's the only time as a white guy. I'm like, oh, is this what it feels like? I'd say like where everyone's going to feel racism is like it's from the Chinese. So Cause I feel like from black people, we feel racism from certain races, but y'all will probably feel it from different races and stuff. Like Chinese are giving it to everyone. Yeah, yeah, there. exactly. Anybody <laughs> can catch it from them niggas. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I never thought about it because I don't really like get super discriminating on but sometimes i do feel like punjabis be talking mm. i was gonna say like now, certain indians like i feel like they're like they might rate me but like sometimes i feel like they're really talking ish about me you know it's like they think <laughs> you're the people in the six buzz comments saying <laughs> the bad shit about indians they look at just like a random guy like yeah. look at this piece of shit he definitely wants us to go home i used to work with like okay i was the only black guy there pure punjabis and shit and then, like, when we're on the floor, they're just all speaking in their language. Mm -hmm. And me and the boss are just looking at each other like, yo, I know they're talking pear grease about... And I'm trying to tell the boss, like, yo, put a rule where they have to speak English. And the man's like, oh, I can't do that. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I'm the white guy at the workplace. Like, you tell the boss to <laughs> no. put a rule where they <laughs> no, have to speak English. So one time I paged them, I'm like, oh, speak English. Speak. They're like, oh, nah, nah, we're just doing our own thing. We're doing our own thing. So I went home and I looked up pear, like, uh, Punjabi... Um, Slurs? Like, yeah, like the worst words you could possibly say. So anytime they're speaking, I just started yelling out all like the worst words. Ben Chot! Yeah, yeah all that stuff. That mean? Sister f***. Mm. And then they started to get cheese that weird stuff. Ben like, Chot? Be, uh, ben Chod. Ben, ben Chod. Yeah. Ben Chod. I'm going to Ben Chod like that. Ben Chod. Ben Chod. But not ben honestly, Chod. I rate I rate the Punjabis, bro. Because, yo, I've been doing Uber. I recently, like, I do Uber Eats oh, sometimes. Like, hair, I drive it. an Uber driver. Who would have thought that name would pop up on the screen? <laughs> <laughs> Delivering your meal. It's Zar, bro. Zar. Do you consider me white? Do you consider me white? Not with that name, no. <laughs> My actual name is George. Bro, you're like that white that you get um, all the white privilege in the real world, but you take POC on the interview box, you know? <laughs> you're like that white guy. 
Western Middle Eastern. That's literally yeah. what, what it ends up being. It's like there is a category for like Arab, I guess. You look like the white people that like took the Palestinians' land. You know, like you're <laughs> like from Europe, Israeli? but you now you got a bit of Arab look to you. He's a double agent, low key. He's a covert agent. It just goes to all the white. I could spaces. blend in. I like, could blend in. You look like an IDF. Spy. Oh my god! In the Toronto scene, this, these mics are gonna blow up on us if we talk about it. Have to infiltrate Israel. the Toronto media. <laughs> I'm so pissed because you're not the first person that's called me an IDF agent. Why have you been pushing like Israel no, propaganda? My, no, no, my <laughs> boy propaganda. My yeah, boy what? June, my boy Rude June, just always just like we always just like roast each other and call each other like yo, <laughs> shut up, like you're like a, a lizard or whatever. Like we just go on some conspiracy roast and he's like yo, your idea, Mossad, uh, yeah. Matt was on nephew and stuff. He's like, bro, stop trying to recruit me to join the war in Israel. <laughs> like, oh man. Yeah, we're definitely getting like 35 views on this with the yeah, shout out there. <laughs> I told you, 38. That bass. Three um, of them are gonna be my mom. But I will say that like um the the Punjabis here, bro, I think they work harder than like every other like type of Canadian. Like they mm. are the ones who That's are working. You don't think so? That's Have cap. you met Filipinos? Filipinos work hard. They work Saturdays too, and Sundays and evenings. Wait, Real. which which careers? Have you like met nurse? nursing? <laughs> I don't think there's anybody that works harder than a shawty in second year university that just got out of a relationship. And she's going to have three jobs plus school and she's doing some shit on the side, bro. Is like, working at a bar like, three nights a week at a different <laughs> bar each night and not three fucking <laughs> Jobs. <laughs> I feel like it's just that one shorty you're describing. Yeah. <laughs> not every man, yo, every, trust me, in the comments, of where every man knows that one shawty that just has pure jobs for no reason. Okay, who is the hardest working group in Toronto? You're saying light skins? I'm not saying light skins. <laughs> I'm just saying... I'm just saying Shati is in second year university that just got out of a relationship. No, I got to say that <laughs> you said the most racist is Chinese. I think they're also the most hardworking because I see those students, like 18 year olds in those, at those universities and colleges driving those fucking cars like well, it's not because they work hard it they're don't matter spies, someone's working bro. right bro they're, that, that's <laughs> working Zijin hard Jing. as a spy bro yeah, that's true that's idf true. isn't paying you enough we need they're not bro. But most of those condos <laughs> and stuff that come out is because of uh, chinese development and stuff so like they send their youths out here to go to school and stuff and, hard like, working and the same with the africans like like that's why i kind of like that the africans are out here because it's giving like um another perspective on niggas you know what i mean because what you see like that african youth fully dripped down in the Lambo and shit, like yeah. fresh in the robes. It's like, okay, all right. Nigerians like, work hard. Yeah, you know like what I mean? Every Nigerian I have is like good conservative family values. Yeah, like, Well, their family back home works hard. And then, because yeah. I know a man that was going in school, he lied to his pops that he didn't get OSAP. So mm -hmm. his pops paid for his whole school, international student, and the man got OSAP on top of it. So the bros, he was just like, like living his best life all throughout school, bro. It was crazy. Huh? Do you consider like uh, African black the same as like like New World, like North America, Caribbean black? Yeah, you know. I said niggas is niggas. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, like <laughs> I you see know, a white, distinction. White mans don't. Say, okay, you're different. You if know you, what I mean? if most if white my daughter bought either one home. It don't matter. You know, <laughs> <laughs> if they're with my daughter, yeah. <laughs> my daughter, they're right? all the same to me. <laughs> Caribbean Afro beats. I can't tell the difference. <laughs> <laughs> Vibes cartel, yeah. burn the boy. <laughs> yeah. What's your favorite black song? That's N crazy. words in Paris. That's crazy. <laughs> he said that right away too. <laughs> that was good. I, I, that was a that was an unplanned question. Is that your for real? Like that's your favorite song by it's a black just, artist? It probably isn't, but it has to be the choice for the cultural reasons. It's a bit. It's a. It's a great. It's a great title for a song. What do you yeah. listen to? Like, what kind of music do you listen to to get like fired? I up? honestly just listen to Immortal Technique, Dance with the Devil on repeat. <laughs> That's my go-to. That's why I used to like, need to decompress at the end of the day. Hard day work. I put that on. And then, uh, yeah, and then I just rewatch Trump speeches, really. And that's how Have I you, decompress. No, I saw, that's, I saw that's the actual beggar, you know, Marilyn Manson, uh, Sweet Dreams, the the do-over. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I don't listen to a lot of, like, metal and stuff, but, like, that one song, when I do want to get in, like, like my scary white man bag, it's yeah, that yeah, song yeah, and yeah. Eminem Kim. Eminem came sick. No, I grew up uh, loving obviously Eminem as a white guy. Yeah, yeah. And like and Metallica, I remember I went through mm -hmm. Metallica phase with just a classic mm -hmm. rock, you know? <laughs> like but nowadays it's just like 
Same shit you're like, you guys are listening to, probably like Smiley mm. on repeat. Yeah. <laughs> oh, only, yeah. So, so, wait, so you grew up, you grew up in Durham region. Yeah. So Start like. at the ends. The. It's scary out there. When you a power were, plant. When you were growing up around there, like, was there this like Toronto man's culture, like in the high schools or was it all just like hockey talk? You know what? This whole Toronto slang, people act like these suburban towns don't contribute to the slang. Ooh. They make it worse. Who do you think contributed the A to the nyay? A white boy going in there saying A all the time. That's that white boy twang. But even <laughs> oh, think. Yeah. That's Even think good for it. Crazy if you had to think one of the most iconic Toronto accents, Buxby Ballin. Yeah, we all know him. Yeah. Boy, one time fam, Ajax man's mm. boy wonder making all the Drake's beats, producing all the hits. That guy's straight out of Pickering, bro. You know, a guy like Sean Mendes, guy like Sean Mendes, Corey Joe about the ring home. Yeah. So do you feel like Durham? <laughs> do you feel like Durham like Shout gets Corey slept Jones, on? Though. Some forty one, bro, from Ajax. Really? That is mud. Yeah, that part's mud. Yeah, that's that like for smart. the white boys. That was a big one. That that's big huge. One I think for everyone, some forty one was like one of the biggest bands in the world at one point. Perdido Laficiana or whatever that hurdles runner back in the day. <laughs> Wait, I'm gonna search famous people from Durham. Go ahead. Also, one of the most legendary schools for the biggest. The duttiest things. Shout out Pine Ridge. Blah, blah, blah. Call it Crime <laughs> Ridge where I'm from. Yo, Pine Ridge went through like a three year span where like the shotties were just doing the duttiest thing. I remember there was a video that leaked of a shot to get in train in like one of the elevators in the school, bro. Mm, shout out like, Aisha. <laughs> <laughs> well, what would you think? Why you say Aisha? It could have been a. It was probably was a Colleen. Yeah, yeah, probably. Was <laughs> you know Colleen. what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. I'm just saying it as a callback. You know, my okay, 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 train. Okay, no. I always uh, have to fend because I'm the one black guy. So when I don't fend it, as we get it at me. Yeah, like, it, was yo, a call back. it was a callback. He got it. He got it over here. <laughs> yo, natural. How can we do the that? <laughs> Oh man! So, so, do you feel like Durham doesn't get the credit it deserves? Like when we're talking about Toronto no, culture, I think we just claim Toronto and we just absorb what's their culture. Like when you're traveling to Mexico, ain't nobody saying they're from Durham. You're just like, I'm from Toronto. Mm -hmm. You're not trying to explain it. I'm just like 20 minutes east of Toronto. <laughs> like mm -hmm. you just say you're from Toronto. The GTA is all absorbed into one giant metropolitan area. Yeah. Like everybody commutes into the city and works. Like you know, like you're intertwined with the city. People with from Toronto are like to like hold that and be like, nah, you're not from the city. But like, you know, they contribute just the same. They're out there. They're in and out of the city. Just, and that's just a suburb, man. Just is what it is. It's just nature. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> just natural. <laughs> and shout out Poco, yeah. who's been pretty good, behaving well. Um. Terrifying. I wanted to ask you um, because I feel like uh, when we went to the roast, mm -hmm. you were you were able to handle the crowd really well, you know. And obviously, like you're from Durham, but you probably performed in different regions. Like, do you feel like there is a difference between the white style of comedy versus the black style of comedy? No, I think it's like there's obviously a different like the like black comedians. There is a cadence sometimes you do see with that, but like I think it's more of individual style. You know, mm -hmm. like you have some. Black comedians, white comedians, female comedians, whatever comedians, storytellers. And they're just kind of like great at storytelling. And then you have other people who are great at roasts. And then other people mm -hmm. that's like Mr. X. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think it's just everyone forms into their own individualistic style. That being said, I think culture and what your upbringing is naturally can affect your style. So like like you said, with like uh, black comedians, you've seen it before. Like there's a lot of like the same maybe cadences mm -hmm. that like, but that's just also like how people talk. Culturally, yeah. From that, in that community. So yeah. like obviously there's some similarities and it's, so you get that like it's just it's life playing itself out in an art form and you mm. see like the cultural the individualness and how they blend it all together but do you feel like depending on the audience that's in front of you you have to kind of like alter your performance because even mm. like as I'm DJing if there's a bunch of like black people in front of me I know I'm going to DJ a certain way if there's a bunch of white people in front of me I'm going to DJ this way you know what I mean mm -hmm. if it's like a bunch of shotties I'm going to DJ this way if it's a bunch of guys I'm going to you know what I mean yeah no you for sure have to adapt to the audience but the great thing about when you figure out what a great bit is is the joke will pretty much work it's universal mm -hmm. in any audience and maybe there's adjustments and that's kind of the part of the battle is like yeah even going across Canada and uh, like I haven't been fully across but we did the whole East Coast tour last summer and 
the different this different cities the, the you can just feel the energy difference like you go to like Moncton for example bilingual city so it's like about almost like I don't know what the spill it but let's just say 50 50 English and French okay. so we're there and we think we're bombing eating dicks there's people that bought tickets not massive laughs and everything but then at the end out of the whole tour we had most tips that night by far people were like loved the show and then people explained they're like oh yeah a lot of it's like bilingual people they just like like to listen mm. you know and oh. see, like if they're not like actually like as like you got me on that mr they're just like huh nice yeah, exactly. uh, you just smile along and then you like and then you're in this place like ottawa i've always had like just rowdy drunken crowds <laughs> toronto like is everything you've seen what it can be that, mm-hmm. that was like a very unique show that's a very wave room yeah. <laughs> audience we had urban <laughs> but yeah you have rooms here that could be very woke as they want to say you can have yeah. rooms here where you get people saying every slur in the world and everything in between and uh that's the beauty of it is uh like even i'd like to say of jokes and like whether it bites me in the ass or not like i just find it funny mm-hmm. like that's just my style and like i try to like play within that and like to a degree obviously you know you can't say slurs like you kind of know where the bars are and you mm-hmm. don't want to get your ass kicked right so like some rooms you might not be able to perform in because of that right what's like, the worst bomb you've ever had oh uh, it was Oshawa concert hall Australia Wildfire Fundraiser. Oh, Shout man. out to them. They were doing... Uh, well, that's how to make it beer, fireman. <laughs> bro, <doing> such- <laughs> no, no, no. They, it was a concert. They were doing live cover bands. So yeah. it's like all old white people doing like classic rock cover bands. And then they're like, all right, in between this band, people are on the floor dancing and sh- Oh, no. We got this comedian going to do some jokes oh, in between music. So oh. you guys, DJ, you can imagine yeah. like the whole vibe. is yeah. just like, And everyone's like sits down, goes to get a drink. Yeah. And then like, I just remember eating dicks. And the only people laughing was like, it was all old white people. There's like two people's like kids, oh, like teenagers, no. you know, you've been that were like eating- dying. Like, <laughs> I, like how much I was eating dicks up here. Pause, bro. Well, you've been saying eating dicks beer times. Bro, to- that's what it feels I'll- like. I'm telling you. Yeah, I'm going to say pause one time. It's going to last for the duration of the episode. <laughs> Episodes, yeah, <laughs> the mega pause. Yeah, the mega pause is gonna, you know, this applies to all future pauses. Yo, I did have a question about that because it's, we, it's non binary dicks, it has tits okay. or dicks, Stick tits on those dicks, genderless dicks. Yeah, yeah, it's the ice cream Gen that X they dick. get from the downtown. Yeah, okay. yes, yes, yes. Uh, Church and Rosie dicks. I wanted to ask because Wave and I, like, we have a comedy music album mm-hmm. and we're trying to throw a show, and we were discussing, like, the blending of stand up and music. Do you recommend not doing that? Like mixing uh, acts or did, have you seen it work? I have an album out right now, a comedy music album out right now. But like mm. for a show, like when it's like, okay, we have like a musical act and then we have like a comedy act and then we have a musical I act. I think like- it could work. Like there's people that do like blend it in. Like Adam Sandler does that in his live shows. Bo Burnham, he kind of does that. Bo Burnham was sick. And um, I think you could do it, but like it's just a matter how you kind of frame the sh- like yeah. the framework of the show. Like talent shows pull it off. Exactly. Exactly. You know, mm-hmm. I feel like the reason why I didn't work for that show is because they're doing covers of well-known songs that everybody knows. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like for us, we're going to be doing like our songs. Yeah. And then it, that's kind of like a comedy routine where like people don't really know what to expect. They're going to like take in the tracks mm-hmm. and then that's what it is. You know, mm-hmm. if someone's like jamming out to like Sweet Caroline. They don't want like some random comedian to come next. You know? Yeah. yeah. Th- no, that's what I was going to say. Like they're on their feet. <laughs> they shouldn't be listening to stand up. Oh. <laughs> like, it's like a seated activity. Oh, okay. then people are on their feet. It's if anything, I would like maybe do it as a finale. Comedy up. warm up. No, no, oh, no. You start off low and finish high. Music mm-hmm. though is a high. Mm-hmm, you know, do a little stand up and then be like, all right, now we're performing our tracks. You heard him say it. Musicians are better than comedians. Yes, I get so je- I get jealous, man. I do music too, but like we've asked to perform us some live a couple times, and we've been a bit hesitant because I did a collab album with. Uh, I saw who you did the collab album yeah, with. Yeah, I've actually out. seen him live. Do you with remember? Who? Do you remember that time I did my first open mic, and there was a guy who was like, "Would you f- retard?" Do you Jared, remember that he did a whole album with yeah, that guy, bro? Yeah, I showed it, Jared. And and like we have songs on like four songs on on the Sirius XM, so we get paid from those songs and no shit. No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To the comedy channels. And uh, there's a lane with that, and we were like, um, that started off organically. Organically, we had a viral song. We just made it as a joke, extra chromosexual. If you haven't heard it, check it out. But like that one, when like, give us, give us a little bit. Of, you haven't heard this? Yeah, oh, it's it. a banger. It goes, if she ain't down, I ain't down. 
Jeez. Special <laughs> needs pussies would I like to pound. Hey. Hey. No, like something like that. Okay. But no, I remember that Actually, one. Actual And then uh, yeah. he's like singing the ad lib. Extra chromosome. Extra <laughs> chromosome. It's a great song. Um, shout out Jerry Nathan. But we, we have an album. And, like We yeah. submitted that shit for Junos and shit and everything. We like Obviously, we didn't win or like, nominated, but we're like, you know what? Oh, they didn't nominate you? No, but we know the comedian. Like They were saying like we actually like... We're in the talks. Like they, people liked it. Like some people like loved the album. It was yeah. well put together. And uh, okay, we might not get nominated. Then, we also submitted for the Junos. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Next, next year. Next not? year. Next year. We'll try again next year. We're gonna try every year. I when guess. Did you, did you submit this year? <laughs> yeah, we submitted this year. It's like about when you released it. I think we were. Oh yeah, we we were within the parameters. Yeah, I think. Yeah. What was yeah, your yeah. album like? Can you play like a snippet for me or something? Here? I can play play in the GTA. When are we collabing then? Yo, yeah, no, we should do we have track. a studio here, bro. We, we can literally, literally cook up a track like right now. <laughs> yeah. After this shit. Yeah, after this. We drop this. I'm um, trying to make a Christmas song. Yo, maybe we should get him on our Christmas track. Okay, because we just did a... Okay, show him the... Should we, should we'll show it? you this first, then we'll show you the Christmas track after, because that's not dropped yet. Yeah, yeah, don't worry about that. But this got... Me and Jared 150 to get views. the views. Oh, Instagram. 150k. 150k. 150k views? Yeah. If you want to see some crazy Yeah, so we have like we have bare songs. We we should show them Brown Girl. No, nah, show extra homosexual for the yeah. Viewers. Let's run it. Let's this run one it. has like I don't know. It it's um hundred something thousand on YouTube music video for sure. That's mod though. We have to get on YouTube. Now. We had uh we have like quite a bit streaming over like in the tens of thousands, like 50, 60, 70 ish thousand there area. Yeah. It might be up to hundred k by now. I haven't looked in a while. Okay, that's actually very good. That's a sick hoodie. I was gonna wear it today. Decided so, not. Nah, wanted to show off the poppy. Shout out Cringe Cab, extra chromosome. Let's go. Jeez. <laughs> Yo, this beat is mod. This song is hard. <laughs> she ain't down, I ain't down. Mud. <laughs> she ain't down, I ain't down. Mud. Extra chromosome, extra chromosome, and Rosie actually has extra chromosomes. Yeah, that's oh, that's mud. <laughs> I love how he has like what looks like a water bottle in his hoodie pocket the whole time. <laughs> Shout out Jordan Nathan, that guy's a big comedian. He's massive. All right, that's enough of this. <laughs> Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Right, let's let, it, let it spin. Okay, all right, all right after, after, after. We gotta get the <laughs> podcast reacts like as a YouTube video. You guys put like reacts to extra chromosomes. Yeah, we're we'll oh. good. Yo, no, that, that I think, one that, I think that gave me extra chromosomes. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, be honest, whose idea was it? Oh, for sure. So mine. Okay, but let me hear. Yeah, it. You know what you should say? Extra chromosomes. No, no, this guy's a big comedian on uh, Kill Tony and shit. This guy's like uh, massive. Oh, on, oh yeah, he was on Kill Tony. He's a golden ticket winner on Kill Tony. He's a he's a pretty big comedian. Okay, that's good. Like anybody. Can no, get no, on this Kill guy's Tony. a stand up. This guy's okay, like a okay, uh, golden ticket good, winner. But when, like he, we, so like he he started blowing up on Kill Tony, and I saw him make a shit song. Not shit song, but like it was just like I was making a song. I was like, oh, we could clean this up. So I was like, bro, like link up in the studio. Let's just cook something up. And this is around the time when that Victoria's Secret model Down Syndrome one came out. So mm -hmm. we're like, okay, and like wet ass pussy's a hit song. We're like, you know what? This is like the cultural norm. So let's like lean into it. Like, cause he, he always jokes like, yo, people like chicks, you know, don't want to f you when you're like retired. You know, type shit. Like, that's, I'm not saying exactly his words, but like yeah. kind of paraphrase it, paraphrasing kind of thing. And um, so we're like, yo, let's make it cool and let's make a banger to make it like kind of a making fun of how like everything's like so like over sexualized mm -hmm. and like everything's accepting with this gender and like sexuality spectrum. So, like, yo, let's create a new one, extra chromosexual, <laughs> and make it cool yeah. for like you to get fucking laid. That was actually my. So it's actually a good message, low key, but it's yeah. just ridiculous. It's like a meme. You should but. play him Brown Girl real quick, just the chorus. Sure. I want to show the him the video after the full video. Yeah, yeah, just play him the chorus real quick, bro. Because right, right now, obviously, this is a hot topic, you know, so we have to make a track for the Brown Girl. Trump girl or the Browns? Yeah, the, the Brown Girl them. Mm. The Gal them? Yeah, yeah. 
Welcome to Shati.com. We are here with the beautiful Love Preet. Are you ready to meet your two matches? Yes. We actually Perfect. casted the Indian team and everything. Your first guy is an international student by day and Uber driver by night. Jake Preet! Um, his goal is to franchise his very own Tim Hortons. So uh, yeah. Meet Mazdeep, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Wow. This the <laughs> Must do you? Oh my goodness. Oh, he's doing a dance, guys. Where'd you get this girl from? Amazing. The bus stop? Your second <laughs> this girl? guy. We met her at the Rose. Sheet. We met at this girl at the Rose. This girl's oh, She was there. Lyrics, everybody. <laughs> Shut up, my fans. <laughs> Doesn't have any jobs written down on here, but does seem to make money somehow. Um, meet your second match. Big wave. I like how the lizard's watching too. <laughs> In a hurry. Jeez. Cross the other street when you see that man walking. <laughs> Gonna put you in a sorry. Need a brown girl in a hurry Make me roti, Jeez. chicken, curry Yum At the temple we murray Lighted incense, smoky, blurry Wow Butter, chicken, tandoori mm. Wrap it in the dal curry Excellent Go to Seneca and study It's all for the love of money She don't want no Fendi She want a henga and she got a bindi Heard she works at Timmy's How many roommates you got? Like 20 She still keep a gangster Got choppers like Priyanka. Her she all about the money boy. It must be the vibe. Permanent residency. Guard of world security. <laughs> I got the one bedroom. You could move in your whole family. Put me on the data plan from India. Unlimited GBs. Oh damn! I think? wish I got on a verse on this. I'm jump pissed. <laughs> Yo, we gotta get him on the Christmas track. 100%. I wish I had a verse on this shit. Like I would have loved to like <laughs> rap about them people pooping on the, the beach and shit. It would have been a great addition to the track. Just went on the beach. We have more tracks. We have more tracks following. We have more tracks following. Yo, we definitely have to collab on some music Cause yo, I also seen you had some AI type tracks And you, the Kamala, I seen the Kamala oh, yeah, one I seen yeah. it, the Kamala was joke We do that shit for views, bro mm. I had people get mad about, I've had people get mad Like in my personal life, like, why are you supporting Trump By making AI Love Sosa remix With Donald <laughs> Trump's voice, you're like This is for the culture this isn't, like, yo, this I isn't promise political. you, this is not affecting The election in any way Yeah, and if it did, then you should be It's happier. gonna be a white boy summer for the next four <laughs> years Boys <laughs> Yeah, shut up. You're welcome. You know, you we had need, your time. Need, no, no, no. We need them. We need them. We don't. We wouldn't know what's cool or what's not cool. You know, shout out to the black world. They can still there. tell us what's cool. White boy summer is not fun unless you have black people in the party to make it cool and fun for the they whites. Have, they you have know? the co-sign. They have to co-sign the white boy summer. I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, white boys are like we want them. We want to be in the Jason. It makes us feel cooler. You know, it does. It does. There's nothing like uh like a black dude giving you like like real respect as a white dude, and you're like, damn, like this is actually like this guy rates me. You know what I'm saying? It's more like this. Thank God this guy's not gonna rob me, kind of feeling. <laughs> but I feel yeah. I, feel I, feel like I had a skewed perception on like white people. Fair because enough. growing up, like, I was in a multicultural school, but I only really hanged out with niggas and shit. You Where'd know? you go? What school? Um, well, like, I went to Fleming PS. This was like in in like um, Peterborough. This was in Malvern, but it was like in a better part of Malvern, so it was like a lot of brown people there, like big mm. houses and stuff. Yeah, but yeah. outside of school, I only hang, hung out with niggas. Yeah, yeah. But my half brother, he lived in Pickering. And he was cool with like he was very athletic, so the, the hockey white boys, team, yeah, football, all that. So anytime there was parties and stuff, I'd always go with him to the parties and thing. Mm. And that just like gave me a new perception on like like the cool white hockey guy, you know what <laughs> I mean? Like the white things are there, like everyone's like drinking and like smashing and stuff. Like it was just seems so lit and like and it's never like a beef thing with the yeah, hockey boys. Exactly. Like they'll kind of beak you a bit here and there, but that's just like anyone, you know? Yeah, like, it's, just, it's just chirping and stuff, but there's yeah. no like real beef. Everyone's just having been real fun and i'm like mm. this is nothing like the parties i'm used to you know like no one's getting shot no one's posting up on the wall smoking no, the back exactly ones. exactly like, <laughs> i was i was still smoking but like they're doing other drugs 
mm. to you know what I mean? Like no. everyone's <laughs> mingling and stuff. I'm like, yo, this is a different vibe still. Wait, like, what's the funniest is when you get a hockey boy at one of those parties. They look so scared and out of place. No facts. They turn into like a conservative white dude. So <laughs> quick. Yeah. Like, you know, just, <laughs> no uh, like, we should head out of here, honey. <laughs> it's storm coming. <laughs> Bad weather on us. Did you play hockey? I work in hockey. That's why I do work in hockey. I play oh. hockey. Uh, oh, I won't okay. say who I work for because I have extra chromosexual as a song. Oh, uh, but okay. yeah, I do. That's it. I work professionally in that sport. No way. Yeah. Holy. So, yeah. so did you go through like the AAA, like that circuit or was it more like you knew how to play hockey and like, bro, I'm a, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm a professional water boy. That's, that's a, still sick. That's literally what I am. For like the Leafs? <laughs> <laughs> don't tell me, don't tell me, don't tell me. It's okay. But the yeah, Marley's? I'm a professional, I'm a professional <laughs> water boy. And uh, and yeah, it's it's very nice. You get to fill up water bottles. You got to give them towels. Um, yeah. Do you do laundry? Have, have you ever loved doing people's laundry? It's uh, it's an honor. You be smelling the jock straps and shit. I don't lie. Mm, no, no, no. <laughs> do they just throw towels at you and you're like, thanks? No, honestly, I talk shit to them because I'm like, I have more fans than all you guys. No one cares about hockey. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. I have more fans than all of you. Like, I'm your fucking water boys fucking out doing all of you guys. You guys need to step it up. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. <laughs> you know, water boy. So now I get a lot of respect from the boys. They all, they all fuck with me heavy. You know. Yo, I did want to get your take on like, because I know you watch stand up. Who was like your Mount Rushmore of stand up comedians? My personal favorites are like the Mount Rushmore. If you had to just like create a Mount Rushmore, give us both. So first, your personal favorites, and then like I'll the just I'll, I won't say I'll say some comedians that have uh, influenced me. Mm. I fell in love with comedy first time I've seen it was straight out of Pacific Mall, a burnt DVD, the Russell Peters album. Mm. You guys remember that one? Uh, somebody gonna get to her real bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was like yeah. when I first like was like, yo, this is a thing. Like you yeah. can just go up there. I just thought he was talking shit. I was like, this guy. I mean, easy you just go up there and talk yeah. and like he really represents what toronto is because he is a master at playing different races yeah and it's because he's from a city like toronto where he has knowledge about all these different races mm -hmm. so like he's he's one of those ones that i always loved early um i think dave Chappelle in the Chappelle show the early years like he's he's the goat in my eyes the comedy goat for white boys right now bill burr has got to be up there Bill Burr. Uh, but for my style of comedy, I'd like to look at uh, like Anthony J Anthony Jeselnik with his timing. Uh, okay. One of the best roasters. And I like how he's Mr. X. Mm -hmm. So like I definitely uh, learn, like watching him, I'm like, oh, how can I apply? Maybe if I'm trying to talk about a really like, punchline, mm -hmm. maybe sometimes it's like how he slows it right down to help deliver that. Mm -hmm. And like, so like, you know, I see like, you see stuff like that. And, uh, and I like how Andrew Schultz plays with like, a modern Russian Russell Peters kind of has jokes about like anywhere, mm. anyone, any place in the world. So, but the Mount Rushmore, I would say you'd have to go like Richard Pryor for sure. I think you got uh, Carlin. Go. I think you're going to go Dave Chappelle. Go. And then, damn, I wonder if you go like, you know what? I got the Canadian up there. I'll throw Jim Carrey. Ooh. Just, just you know, white white boy Canadian. Yeah, you know? represent yeah. He though. wasn't for stand up though, but just like comedian. Yeah, if you're opening up, but stand up wise, you're right. It would be like head shout out to Jim Carrey, you know what I mean? But stand his yeah. is more Burr, like physical maybe. comedy. Yeah. Shane Gillis right now is Gillis uh, is killing it. He's not yeah. on the Mount Rushmore yet, Definitely but like not. that guy could be. Yeah. yeah, I'm trying to think who else would be on that. Yo, like, but like as a as a black, you two black guys in the room, you guys appreciate a white guy comedian being a bit racy, you know? A little bit. Yeah, you know, like not too much, but like you. I want was gonna that. say my favorite white comedians, of my all time is will be George Carlin. I don't yeah. feel like he gets too racy, but I also love Bill Burr. You know yeah, what I mean, I love. Um, he has a black queen as his wife too. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. <laughs> and um, who's the guy you just said? He's always on Shane Gillis. Yeah, Shane, Shane Gillis. Gillis is he's sick. Mad. Sick yeah, Trump. Yeah. He does a sick Trump. Yeah, but I don't really like too many white comedians. You have to like really speak to me. You know what I mean? Those guys. That's like, what makes like great stuff. comedians great. Yeah. We're like, are you like you typically you don't. Follow a white comedian but like then you're like a really good one can make a joke where you're like damn like even yeah, exactly. i am even i get what he's doing you know <laughs> exactly. what i will say though like and this is my perception i might be wrong but i feel like black audiences like they want a white comedian to like be themselves and still be funny but then you have like the gary owens who's like entire brand is kind of based he on had like, the black he had yeah, the blacks in on owens. yeah Oh damn, Delilah! <laughs> like, I, I, think, I 
think Gary Owen is funny sometimes. You know, that, that only he could is. work. Kind of cringe. A that little could bit. only work in that time, but I feel like he was kind of propped up. You know what I mean? Like I he leaned into it a bit. He leaned into it for sure. Yeah, like he's he, like, you know what? This is my demo. Like this is what it's gonna be. But I it does like seem leaned, like that is him. Though. I feel like he leaned into it too much. Mm. Where it became <laughs> like, I think he says it too. Yeah, I don't, I didn't like, and I think he like, I think he like, the streets would allow him to say it. They make, I, you, I. Well, well, most of his chill. fan base, most of his fan base is black. It's a lot of black women. Yeah, that's another thing too. Like, black women be allowing certain shit that niggas never would allow. Like, black women be bringing certain white men to the cookout that niggas be looking, niggas be looking like, yo, who, who that type shit. You know what I mean? But so that's how I feel like he was allowed to get where he's at because niggas would never allow that. What type of white dude do you have to be to be like an appropriate cookout invitee? You gotta either bring food or some. F- Weed or some liquor. <laughs> That's one of the three. If you come empty handed to a, a cookout, I feel like as a white guy, like they're not gonna like look down upon you, but you're not gonna win them. Yeah, yeah. Not- you gotta win the black woman first. Mm-hmm. The big black woman specifically. Yeah, and you have to bring the right food. You have to bring the right food. <laughs> You can't bring no meatloaf casserole and shit. And you can't be bringing no political shit either. Unless yeah. if unless if you like, unless if that's really you, if you genuinely mean this meatloaf casserole and like that's just your vibe that like, what, okay, you you eat that yourself, but you can still follow it. Or I think a really autistic white guy. <laughs> They'd be like, honestly, this just, yeah, he's vibing, he's, he's vibing. this girl's husband, he's rich as f- developed an app. He doesn't really like, <laughs> he doesn't mean any harm. He just sits there. You know? but I just feel like, the man like Gary Owens, like the guy who you feel like is trying to act black instead of like, because there are white people who grew up like in certain environments where you just feel like, hey, this is just who this guy is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there's a certain white guys where like you feel like they're putting it on. It's just like, all right, get out of here, dude. <laughs> yeah. So I feel like they like black people prefer a white dude who's a little more white than black unless it's like, OK, like Eminem. I think black people like exactly. authenticity from what I've noticed in black audiences. Exactly. Mm. Like funny is funny. But that being said, like, they do not want, like, a woke guy either. No one wants to see a white guy up there and be, like, the white savior Facts. type mm. shit. Like, they want to see a white guy to be, like, number one, they love act outs. So act out comedians are great. I know black audience love comedians that, like, act out a lot. Oh, okay. That's, mm-hmm. like, very, that works out. Really. Like, animated? Like, being, Yeah, like, like, body movements, a lot of, like, uh, watch yeah. white Jim Carrey also, like, yeah. black people love Jim yeah. Carrey. He's yeah. very big in act outs. Mm. Um, but I feel like, like, a guy like Tony Hinchcliffe, a roast comics do well mm-hmm. because sometimes by audiences, if you can like kind of like go back and forth with them in like a non hateful way, like they realize you're in on the bench and then like, ah, right, it's like a test. Yeah. So sometimes that's why like a Hinchcliffe talks about winning over black crowds. And it's like, I literally like he jokes about like, talking shit. Someone in the audience and end up being ASAP Rocky. He found it after the fact, but oh, you yeah, know, like oh, it was yeah, just yeah, like I a remember. moment, like yeah. sometimes you're telling your jokes, it's bombing. And then you just need to be like, all right, I need to talk shit to this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Same with Andrew Schultz, I feel. I feel like that one comedian, he almost went over the crowd with that exchange with Oogie. Yeah. Until he said, Oh, you're the worst black guy I know. I never never hated a black guy so much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have never hated a black person more. Oh my God. Jesus Christ. Yeah, Yeah. you're my least favorite black guy of all time. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Which is like. Great lies though, like, cause oh, it's so man. like authentic in the moment. He's just so fun. <laughs> He's like, you're my least favorite black guy of all time. <laughs> I was like, yo, I know what you mean, but that was not yeah. The line, and bro. it's like that's like being a comedian. You're just like in the moment. Like if you're like, what's something like funny, but also kind of deals with the situation, mm-hmm. and then that you blow that out, you're like. What, uh, <laughs> what I noticed though was Shit. that he was like, "Don't try to upstage me." The moment he said that, I could tell he was like a little defensive, and then it kind of took him out of like whatever mojo yeah. he had going. Because you, know? you could I, tell it wasn't comedy anymore; he was just getting his shit off, which was know? funny though. <laughs> yeah. Awkward. As an audience was, member, I was dying at that, but I'm like, yeah. well, I'm laughing at you, not with you." you know? But like, I feel like in that situation, you got to kind of like lean in with it. It's almost like a kill Tony situation. Where like you're getting interacted with, they have a mic too. Like they're mm. technically a part of the show, yeah. which is a wild card part of that show because yeah. a moment like that randomly comes up, and then it's up to the comedian how they decide. Which him in that situation was funny. Mm. They created a funny outcome. Whether who's who, what you're laughing at is, at my in my eyes, is like for like Waven who's just trying to film something for content. Yeah. This is just entertaining. Yeah. Mm, yeah whether yeah, like this is probably one of the more entertaining points of the night. Mm. And right? I do I do understand going nuclear. I don't remember which comedian talks about it, but he says like 
when you are dealing with a heckler, sometimes you just have to go nuclear. So like, there's nothing like, they can't come back from it. Yeah, but I feel like Oogie is not the type of dude you can go nuclear with because he had yeah. a loud voice. Yeah. That's like a, a white microphone. woman thing, you yeah. know? You go nuclear, not a black Oogie type man thing. Yeah, that, that's true. That's true. <laughs> so how would you have handled it if you were that comedian and like you were in his position and Oogie was telling you, yo, you're reading off your phone. You're I would not professional. Just, I would just try to lean in on him and just try to like make fun of him. And I would just try to like banter back and forth. I think that's the only thing I feel like I would do is like... Mm. If I had some roast, I would try to like do a couple banters and maybe like before he has a check second to say something, maybe change the topic and try to like do a quick switch up joke and like, yeah. you know, take control of the room again. Or I, I would just try to lean into him and just not, like whatever the fuck's coming to my head, like just letting it loose. I know what you mean. Um, and I agree with you by just focusing on him because I feel like once the man made it general by saying, oh, you're my least favorite black guy. He made it too general. Yeah, yeah. He should have like honed in. Yeah, exactly. You're exactly. the worst type of black guy. Exactly. No, that doesn't sound great either. <laughs> That's worse, but, but like, it might have been funnier. Yeah, like, know, like exactly. he had to make it more of like a... Like you, I hate a lot of black guys, but no one as much as you. Yeah. <laughs> Where it should be like, I just hate you, black guy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think it was a learning curve for him. I'm sure. Like, and um, I don't, I don't know. Um, I think like I found it funny, and like that's comedy. Like that show is very raw. Yeah. Where like that was a true comedy show because you had the excellence of Norm. At yeah. the end, who gracefully showed what a great, well put together comedian can do. You had some moments throughout that were like little pops, middles, nothings. And it was just like, that was the positive. It was like, that was a showcase of a, of real comedy. It's usually it's a shit like, show kind of. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like there's great in the shows, but like that gave like, you saw the worst, you saw a bit of the best. Yeah. Mm. So like that was the beauty of that show, which is what you get also, like you said, when you're kind of, we had some dropouts and like last minute people come in and he wasn't the last minute one, but actually <laughs> funny enough, I think with him too is like, like the notes once you get colored on the notes it's tough yeah that is a bad look though like for anyone any like whether you're a musician or like reading a speech for like a political thing like when you can see someone looking at the phone it just it removes the authenticity that yeah connection. a lot of roast comedians do it it's very like like in roast battles they like do it and he's like very like uh like that's almost his style like he's like has his cue cards and it's like works because it's a part of his persona mm. but like he got away from that in that moment i think where he should have kept to the cards because that's what he does. Yeah. Oh, as soon as he got off script, that's when it was like, oh, like you don't know how to handle this situation outside. Maybe, but like I just think because like I've seen him perform and like I know he's trying to get off like reading because like that's what he's known for. Like there's some comics who do that shit, like um, William Montgomery on Kill Tony. Mm. He's the guy that goes up with his like notes and then it's like part of his act. You know, he goes ah, it's like, you know. Mm. So like him, like it, I think it's doable with the notes. Mm. I think he should have. If you're gonna do it though, you got to go all in. Yeah. You can't, you can't differ. You can't get off of that shit. Okay. I want to ask you gay son or thought daughter. Uh, gay son. Yeah. <laughs> I carry my, my son. I care who is inside my daughter. <laughs> That's what I care about. But like, don't you want like your son to have a kid and like continue the legacy? Yeah. He'll have a, he'll have like one of those like lab babies. <laughs> don't let the sperm, you know, does these lab rats. Yeah, I want I want like a custom built baby. You know, six four. <laughs> so I want to go in the lab, be like, you want pick you, you, the dark f- skin. It's yeah. like, yo, this is my yeah. son. This let's, is my grandson. Let's max out the genetic skin yeah. color in here. You want a CRISPR up baby? The stats? Yeah. It's like my player just up <laughs> yeah, the stats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what CRISPR is like a CRISPR. Is like no, darker? no CRISPR. The CRISPR? No, CRISPR. It's, it's kind of like some gene modification thing where you could actually choose like your baby's eye color, all these next things. Like, And this was years ago. So God knows how far they've come along with the technology. Now. What do you do? Does the, like, does the pregnant lady like ingest something and then like, or like does she take a, like a needle or something? Like, what is it? Um, I'm not sure exactly how it works. White people became white. This is my, th- like, I don't know if this is facts, but it became white from living further from the equator. Isn't that how it works? No. no. I thought it was like the lack of sun. No, it's Neanderthal. Over like, uh, over like thousands and thousands it, of years. So. It's like, okay, like, I don't know that, if you want to go yeah. on into this. It's like, you heard that theory too. It, it's, it's, like geneal- the, it's genealogy and stuff. It's like mixing genes and stuff. That's why like, the genes of black people and the genes of white people are like different when it comes to like chromosomes and stuff. But like, it goes really deep. But what yeah. I would say is like, All if, right. if that theory was true, then like, man's born in Canada and man's born further further from the equator, they'd all be light skinned 
You know mm. what I mean? But like, I was literally born in Canada, and look how dark I am. But that's know? like your your like genetic uh, like predisposition. But my Dukes, my Dukes is light skin. You know mm. what I mean? Mm. Like the skips guess, a gen, I guess. <laughs> it takes a while <laughs> for you to become white. But I just feel like I feel like if that was the case, then <laughs> like it's not gonna happen overnight. I have a question oh, then. Sorry, sorry. If we're speaking of like the differences in the genes, so we know like the black people have the advantage with like. The running, you know, athletics, the physical. Jumping, everything. Yes. Physical. So what w- does the white genetics even have an advantage other than the society <laughs> created one? Okay, I will say. If, what so would people, it be? I, I will say, be? Okay, we will get to that question, but just so people know I'm not captain. White people literally have a monkey gene type shit. Jeez. You know what I mean? So like they call niggas monkeys and shit. Ape gang. But like, and I'm not saying that like, oh, ill. I'm just saying that like black... Like we black people have like a certain animal gene. I don't remember which animal it is, and then white people have a different type of animal gene. So you know what? What, I mean? what do you think? Would, does white genetics have any advantage? Like I feel like what would our like thing be? Manipulation. Pretty eyes. We're nah, good. Man, manipulation. Mm. Um, no, not society created one. Eating eating raw meat. Uh, we're better with animals. Yeah, like like hot dogs and stuff. You guys are good with that shit. Good in the water. <laughs> <laughs> high tolerance to weird shit i would say like i feel like white people be crazy and like adventurous i feel like white the white gene is the homoerotic gene <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah per capita white people more gay than yeah, other races probably <laughs> yeah, yeah you might have a case there bro even like when the colonizers were like in these countries like these guys would have all these kids and wives and they would still like bang like the black dude in <laughs> front of all the people yeah, like you yeah. didn't have to do that you know what i'm saying I say, you could have <clears> just beat him up <laughs> i also say like the power gene like you guys are more prone to like like wanting, wanting power, power and stuff what about like chinese what would their advantage be like that area of the world industriousness like just the ability to like tolerate not driving that's working. for sure yeah no 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 <laughs> they did not get that genes but no. like they're good at like teamwork you know <laughs> <laughs> they're good at gr- <laughs> i think that's like a cultural thing like they have like they have strong cultural values like Chinese people, yeah, I feel like they yeah, have yeah. so much history and like their language is very like, they have so many like complicated like narratives. Oh, but they're say, stronger in numbers. And oh, that's I'd say assimilation. Like Indians. Assimilation. They, they'll see a culture and then they would like take it as their own type thing. All right. Indians is a cool one though, <laughs> because Indians don't really win medals in the Olympics. And I don't know if it's like lack of funding for athletic programs in India, but like, so it's definitely not athletics, but like, what would Indians be? Spice tolerance. Smart. It'll be, it'll they be are. They're like smart, smart with it. They're like sneaky smart. Yeah. Some know? of the top CEOs in America are Indian. Yeah. Is it like so a money Chinese thing? Smart. Mm. Maybe like they're good with money. Like I feel like Indians are like. Good I'd say with so, money. and and populating. Yo, Karma they'd be having, they'd they be having a lot of sex. Yo, I didn't realize how much sex Indian people be having, bro. Bro, they're what do you think out that, here. What do you think that smell is? Yikes! <laughs> Pheromones. What is that? <laughs> Oh man, a freshly sexed Indian room is. Cr- oh, but you know what I wonder? I wonder if it's because we are different, like ethnicities from them, that we smell it. Like, do they smell it on each other? I almost feel like it's like no, if they're from that same. Yeah. yeah, like I don't think they smell what we. It's smell. like if you work at the garbage dump, and you know, like the that people that work crazy. there, crazy. But like, don't smell it after a while. <laughs> you know, it's true. Like, if you work around something that smells, you just don't smell it. You get used to it. Okay, but. What is good and what is bad? You know what I mean? Like we, it's, okay, yeah. not we. You guys are saying that is a bad smell. Like, I never said. It's I bad. never said that. Oh, okay, I my never bad, said it's bad. <laughs> but the it's known. It's the, collective. No, it's <laughs> different. Okay, you compared it to garbage. What do you mean you didn't no, say? No, no, I'm bad? saying it's like how garbage men don't smell garbage because they're used. But to But why did you compare it to garbage? Okay, you know how every crib has a has a smell, but you don't know what your yes, house smells like. But like when you go to the next person's house, you could every crib has a smell. You know. But when you live in an apartment building, sometimes the other crib smells be coming into your crib. Mm, yeah, sure. but then you notice it because you're like, this is like outside my native smell, you and know? And that's how they caught Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> True story. <laughs> the smell? Yeah, the neighbors complaining of the smell. Like rotted mm, human. Yeah, this guy's actually funny stuff. <laughs> Before, like, I was kind of on the fence if I thought you were funny or not, but you know, uh, like, you're, you're really funny, bro. <laughs> you're you're so stuff. I have to Yo, Come uh, on to a real stand-up show some die. <laughs> you know, not that thing. <laughs> Yo, speaking of stand-up, I wanted to get your opinion on who you think the top, let's say top five comedians in the Toronto scene are. Like from Toronto? Like yeah. not, they don't have to be in Toronto this second. No, they don't have to be in Toronto this second, but like they're like They've locally. come up from the scene. Yeah. Um, I would say like we're not including like goats like Jim Carrey obviously. No, I'm talking about like, like no. I guess under quote unquote underground. Not underground, but let's just say people are trying to Ryan Long. Mm-hmm. I think he's in New York right now, but he's one of my favorites. I think yeah, I grew up with his brother actually, mm-hmm. and uh, he had a 
He's a killer comic in Toronto he, or out of New York. He's he's huge right now. Ben Bankus has been killing it. Ben Bankus is good. He's, he's Olivia a, Chow. Is yeah, has a, 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 a Chow impression or whatever. <laughs> oh, now you want to say he's Olivia Chow's <laughs> youth or some shit. No, no, he <laughs> ran as for mayor and he identified as Olivia Chow. Oh, that's funny. That's <laughs> Olivia Chow. For mayor, yeah, he's a white guy. Does an Asian accent. It's classic. Classic humor. <laughs> <laughs> people hate him, but people love him. You know how it is. Mm. Uh, yeah, My so Ryan. Type of person, yeah, so. exactly. Ryan Long, Ben Bankus. I'd say Jared Nathan because of the Kill Tony thing mm. for sure. He's been blowing up. Mike, shout out my guy Jared. Uh, Nima Naz, I think you got to say up there for sure because mm. you guys all know Nima. Mm. And then if I had to throw one random comic, I would say let's give it. I'm gonna I'm gonna shout out three people here that are just like people like. And that are Honorable, doing some Honorable things. Mention. Yeah, you know, tied for fifth. Mr. Lewin. Mm. He's a nice guy, great guy. He's a big comedian already, but like, show Mr. He's Lewin. He's a big Instagram page. Yeah, exactly. And he does comedy. He's actually, he's, he's no, he does, he does a good comedy and does sell out all of his shows. Yeah, like he's legit. He, and he, he's, uh, we've done shows together and a uh, mm. great guy too as well. Um, I got to say Nitish Sakuja. Yeah, shout out Nitish. That's my guy. Yeah, one of my sick. favorite guys in the world. He's in LA right now. Killing it. I think he opened up for Russell for like yeah, a, yeah. for a couple of shows and he moved out there. So shout out him. And then the last one, I'll, I'll shout out my uh, homie Alex to do it. You know, he's a guy doing his thing and uh, he, he's starting to get a little traction recently doing like uh, impressions like Jordan Peterson, Tucker Carlson online. And funny oh. little like if Tucker Pe- Peterson or Tucker Carlson was talking about like Hogwarts, mm. you know, so it's like funny like shit and he's really good at it. And uh, seeing him, I've known him for the, since the start and like doing like no following and now recently he's starting to have his uptick. Mm. But the other one, I guess Shea Dorena out of Toronto too. He's big. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no shade arena. Jeez, no mention of Marlon Palmer. I this was thinking is... Marlon Palmer actually too. No, no, no. He was he was or in there. Norm. But I, yeah, I, I showed Norm. I already showed Norm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I already showed Norm. I'm trying to think of like different ones to shout out. Yeah. And James, Jamesy too. James Hassan Phils. Oh, Hassan Phils killer. Is he from? Yeah, he's from Toronto. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. he used to be a baller. Like, um, there was like these like Muslim basketball leagues, and he was like really good. And then he started making like Facebook content and stuff. And then I didn't see him for a few years. All of a sudden, like he's like a pretty he's well hilarious, comedian. Too. yeah. And he has like a good demographic on lock. Like I feel like because what I realized, I was doing like open mics and stuff, and yeah. I was like, okay, if I got, I see people at these open mics that have been doing it for like five, seven years, and like they haven't got anywhere because I feel like they won't hone in on online. Building it, fans. Exactly. Because I was like, it's better to go direct to consumer than like through this Toronto comedy circuit. Because it's like you really are fighting for time. And like you're performing for these other comedians who like don't give a f- about like your jokes. It's like yeah, yeah. it's going to be hard for you to actually build fans. Whereas like it, directly online, people are like, no, I want to go to Kev's show. You know, I want to yeah, go yeah, to yeah, Wave yeah. show or whatever, you know? And yeah. like, why would you focus on a small city like Toronto when you could focus on the world? You know, like imagine how many fans you get. If you're focusing on the world. Yeah, I said, James said it best to you guys at the, when you were interviewing us at the last show. Um, the way to be successful in Canadian comedy is going to the States, unfortunately, or leaving Canada. And look, look, look at Nitesh. Like, he just recently had to head out. Ryan Long's killing it in New York. Ben Bank is even, I'm pretty sure he's out of Austin now. They mm-hmm. come and do shows here still, but like, you need to get that visa mm-hmm. and you need to be able to like hit these cities mm-hmm. and make money there. I think Hassan's probably got that. Like, Norm's definitely got that visa. Like, how do you organize like your own tour? Like you said, you've been, you've done like a, your own kind yeah. of Canadian tour. Like how are you organizing it? You just straight up hit up venues, bro. <laughs> like we try to do a show, like get some dates and you hit up other comics that have run similar like cities. And you're like, how'd you do? What good? What was bad? Any recommendations on venues? You get some contacts. It's just like, like uh, anything else, just like putting the work set it up. Once you get some dates in line, you create some marketing, some branding and put together, run some ads. And, uh, when I did, I did it with Jared. So it was good because he had some kill Tony fans that came out to the show. So you draw from that and then Mm -hmm. you run some ads and, uh, yeah, some shows are great and other shows are misses and, uh, it's part of the game, right? Mm -hmm. But you learn. And I just want to, all creators, artists, whether comedian, whatever you do, you should really take heed to that. A lot of people are waiting for like, some corporation or some label to like, oh, we funded a tour for you and we got all these venues. All you have to do is show up. We got a nice, pretty but No, it's not like that. Maybe when if you're you just, were like viral or something. Yeah, exactly. Like. And even still, like, 
a lot of the people at the top they're booking their own shows they're making their own money selling their own merch and like mm. they're really putting in their own work and like they're reaping the rewards from it you know yeah that's the way to make money in comedy you, like, there's not much money in stand up comedy you gotta run your own events you gotta run mm. your own shows that's also why we do the music like, it's an extra revenue stream you get on serious mm. you get extra revenue coming in Spotify and shit Mm-hmm. Uh, like you, we got to play every game. A lot of guys are acting. <laughs> like yeah, that too. And yo, how did you get your music on Sirius? You just submit. I can give you the guys contact. It's like a guy that like you email. You submit your album. I think he's on the Juno panel too. And uh, yo, swing us that yeah, email, yeah. bro. I'll send you it, and then yeah, you just be like, hey, little blurb. Be like, hey, like, and then they're just like, yeah, I just sent. It was like each song individual file, like a file with all the songs, the mm-hmm. track list, but individual files. Then eventually, like wait, like not or it's not immediate, but after a while, the guy just hits back. He's like, "Hey, he asked a couple of questions. Like, do you have like this cleared on this song? Do you use in this and this?" And that's how they do it. Clean mm-hmm. version, or th- I think Sirius no, XM. No, it, it wasn't really clean. It was more just like, uh, like one of the songs he chose has like a uh, Tony Hinchcliffe on the intro, but it's him introing Jared. Mm-hmm. So it's like in the intro of the song. Mm-hmm. So and Jared just hit up Tony, and he didn't give up. You know, <laughs> so we're just like, yeah, he doesn't care. You can use it. Mm. But like yeah, they just and then uh, then that's on it. And then you're on like Sound Exchange, and you get like paid per radio play. And then it's like just get a check based on how much you plays it is. Mm. So it's another, it's not a lot, but it's another revenue stream. Like that's channels what funds Canadian comedians mainly because it's mainly just uh, like it's all Canada comedians on that channel. Mm-hmm. And uh, so a lot of comedians, it's like their jokes are on there. Oh. Or you just get in randomly on some music, you know, because just to mix it up, they'll throw in some songs, you know. Yeah, that's proper. Man. That's sick. Yeah, we're definitely gonna tap in. Have you filmed like a, a special? No, that's something I wanna I wanna eventually do, but I'm not there yet. Like, and quite honestly, mm. like I got about like twenty to thirty minutes of like material that works that are like of a, my set, but like I don't want to rush that. Like I will do like shit like the wave room shit mm-hmm. where we do like well, I'll do like live events where we tape it and creating content and maybe like other like music albums first I have ideas for but um, when I do a special I want to actually have like a legit fan base mm. like I want it to be ready I don't want to rush it like what's the point of me putting out a stand up special it's not really gonna get you fans most stand ups are getting their fans from other ways mm. and then they're selling their stand up tour that is true you know we kind of like. It's like a random artist is putting out an album. Yeah. You know, and they haven't really developed a fan base or anything like that yet. Yeah, it's like Matt Reif did it through stand-up. But you can put stand-up clips out if you have a good clips here and there. Mm-hmm. So I'm not in a rush. Like, some people want to rush it, but, like, I can put music comedy albums out and still mm-hmm. do some other stuff, but I just want to actually have a legit fan base. Yeah. You know? And I, I feel like that that means, like, you respect the craft because you could just be like, yo, let me just, like, put together, like, a special. Who cares? It's just a special. Yeah. But it's like, you're like, no, nah, I'm not ready. Like, I'm still working on material. And I think uh, a lot of comedians rush the special sometimes, you know? For sure. And it's also like, then if I do get big, I got to hit the road. And I got to do material. Mm. So, like, I'm not going to do a special unless I, like, got the material to do new material or like I'd have to start writing but like if I have a bunch of shows just say I have like whatever a lineup of like I'm going on tour and I know I'm doing 30 minutes each night mm-hmm. I'm like fuck I can't post all my 30 minutes mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm like going on tour and I've yeah, exactly. got nothing to do because it's not like songs you're not so you can redo jokes I guess mm-hmm. you can do it if you're nobody but if yeah. you're like a somebody that someone like actually watches mm-hmm. they'll be like yeah, yeah you watch your special like, yeah, this exactly. is that mm-hmm. so that's why it's like what's the rush how do you um like how do you write a joke? Everyone's different for sure, but for me, I just write in my notepads. Like uh, on the way here, like I mean, like, like the construction of it. Like, do you think of the punchline first, and then do you work backwards? Or um, like it's more just like a idea, and then yeah, sometimes it could be the punch. Like I'll think of like what's like uh, something I could do a play on, you know. Mm. Sometimes, and it's just like random thought, like oh, today, yeah. and then I just draw it in my notepad. So like mm-hmm. today, like even that, like uh, earlier when I just said, uh, like the Holocaust joke, I said, mm-hmm. uh, workplace injury one, yeah, yeah. like that's a joke I have, but it was just like, that's something that was like true. Apparently, like I did have an ancestor or something that like Polish ancestor that died in some concentration camp. Yeah. I don't know, like exact details, but like, it's, I was like, how can I misdirect that? Yeah. yeah. To turn it to like, he worked there, sympathy. Workplace injury, it's like, oh, fucking asshole. <laughs> yeah, you know? but you'll get a pop for that for sure. Yeah, you know, and like, that's just an example of like, you're just thinking about something and you're just like, oh, how could I take it a different angle? Mm. When, when it comes to performing, like, do you prefer performing like inebriated or drunk or do you like to be like sober and then kind of like. I smoke too much weed. Um, but if I have a big show, I try. 
<laughs> yeah, this guy's going. Mm-hmm. I smoke too much weed, so sometimes I'm like, like I'm gonna use it like right after the right after I perform it off stage. Yeah, I'll smoke this joint, like mm-hmm. wind down for a second because the adrenaline's going. No um, yeah, yeah, I roll one. Good. Yeah, yeah. Good night. Um, but yeah, so uh, but no, then I also try to like be like sober too. Like mm. I just feel like I'm gonna be my best self if I'm not tripping. Mm-hmm. So weed's good if you're doing like your material that you do all the time. Uh, so if I'm like used to these jokes, I can roll with it. Cause then you just like chill with it. You might think of a new tag, but if I'm trying new material and I'm too high, I'm like just forgetting where the timing's not there at all. Yeah. Have there ever been shows where you're like, I'm just too zooked right now. Like every I- time in the dank forest, that <laughs> place, wherever the wave room show was, where we were smoking yeah. side, that place always ends up, but no, yeah, you just kind of like, you just acknowledge it. Like I'm fucking. But yo, we seen like yeah. when you were hosting, like, you didn't seem like super like you know what I'm saying? Like I I didn't think, yo, this guy's super zooked, you know what I'm no, saying? Like I you were like clear. One, but I was also like just fing wired because I just like that day I just got back from Thunder Bay in the morning. I had all these comedians dropping out and it was like a scramble to get everything together. Mm-hmm. So in the moment I was more just like, let's just and pull this off. Yeah. Let's get through this like good or bad or mediocre, however this ends up, like we're in this. Mm-hmm. And like, that's why you could probably tell, like I was just kind of like grinding and trying to keep the vibe. All right. <laughs> I was like, you know, let's just keep the vibe good. I know Norm's going to kill it at the end. Yeah. And like even for me, I was like, I'll just do a quick one, two jokes, yeah, exactly. and like I'd get a little joke, and I hope the next comedian comes in and builds off that, and then it wouldn't. <laughs> I'm like, I can we try this again? <laughs> oh, so it was just more like going through the motions. I was like, which is like I hated that that we landed that show on that day, and I had to fly in from Thunder Bay, and I'm like all over the place. But in the hindsight, like the show worked out as it was supposed to, and I think it was an overall positive experience. And the best thing was like the bringing the city together in a united front. Were you involved in the organization of it? Like- yeah, I did. It was all my ideas, everything. Honestly, oh, you, despite like the like how it turned out, I still think it was positive for the city. And it's good to like kind of uh, like foster Toronto culture in that way because I feel like there's so many Toronto creators and influencers, but we don't have like a organized, like cohesive community. But that was like a community building night where it's like you're talking to all these people that you see online, you know? Also, even the shit show of the event is very Toronto in itself. <laughs> yeah. Like it's that's telling, why yeah. I wasn't like, if this show went off like super smooth, it wouldn't have felt right. It's like, why is this going you well? <laughs> like obviously I wanted that, but like this is the first time ever. And even still like Wave Room, like they don't run live events. So mm. I pitched it to them. I'm like, yo, let's do it. I'm just thinking of content. You guys come film. Mm. I'll do some roasts. And then like people like, it was just, the organization was a headache. That's why I was in one. And mm. I was like, I'll just host this shit. Let's get through it. So yeah, but we did it. And I, I wave them heavy. Like, cause like mm. that shit's like, we just, I just do it for content. Yeah. All mm. the shit with the group, someone like that. So I'm like, how can I leverage this partnership? Mm. Not even for like the benefit of just myself, like just everyone. That like, was get, good for the community though. Cause like as Zara was saying, there's no outlets for like, the creators, there's no platforms for the creators other than their own. You yeah. Know what I mean? mm. So like, and people never link up. Exactly. Never. Like it's so hard to get people to link up. So yeah. it's like a one spot where like just fucking pull up and yeah. whoever we get, we get. And we end up doing all right. Like I know Saji was worried. Like, cause like people thought no one were going to show. Mm. You know, that was the big thing, mm-hmm. you know, like because like now, working from, with these people. From Chrome House was on the flyer, Broski. Sell off. That's what, that's <laughs> well, what everyone was talking about. Yeah, well, it's 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 fine. And Chroma is, sh- is chill. She came and talked to me after her and Saji, and they were like, oh, we wanted you guys to go in. Do you have a lighter? We wanted you guys to go in way harder on us. Mm. Just Ash on here? Or? Uh, I yeah, think we have, an, we have an Ash here. Oh, we just, uh, yeah. Yo, uh, um, but yeah, so like, um, so like, but like, they were like, we love what you're doing and keep doing this and like build on this. Like, we love it. So I think we're going to do, uh, um, my next idea is I want to pitch to Wave Room as something like, Maybe not necessarily a full on roast. We're gonna do maybe a comedy hybrid with music. Like we needed a DJ there, for example. You guys are DJs. Yeah. That event needed a DJ. Yeah, yeah we were thinking that that's too. Like, for example, that's like one thing. I'm like, what can I improve on? What? How we can build on this? There's a framework. Yeah, exactly. Let's let's that grow was only this. the first one. You know, like we yeah. just have to keep making it better. So maybe I it's a showcase that, or like a talent showcase or yeah. like. Mm. I can see that eventually turning into like a wild and out type thing mm. where you guys are just always featuring different content creators. That's what I would. Uh, that's kind of what I. Uh, always want to do like a Toronto version of like a while and out. Yo, we should do it, bro. We'll, we'll definitely help you. Like we will like be on that lineup. I'd be down. I or did while and out once in Scarborough actually. Oh, for real? Mm. At my old employment of Centennial College. Mm. I yeah. talk about now. I want to ask you because uh, I first saw your content on Wave Room. Like you were like, I think, was it like a pop the balloon? But it was like, 
I was I remember being like, yo, this guy is mad cringe, but I'm like, oh, his name's cringe kev. Like it's kind of <laughs> like an act, you know? It's a disclaimer, but like, bro. <laughs> but like how did that how did that connection happen with you and Wave Room? Do you just like apply to be on one of their videos or did, did they kind of no, see you? I've been doing content for a minute. Mm -hmm. And uh yeah, they, they, I don't even remember. Like they hit me up to do something, maybe. Because you've done a few videos with them. Like I've seen you You know what it was? <sighs> skits. You know skits? Mm. I did the tr yeah, the Smasher Pass, the Toronto mm, Smasher Pass. Yeah, with Nana Goody. A Ali, who does Wave Rooms, who's the content guy for Wave Room. Yeah. He was on that. And mm. I met him there. And I think then, like, one time, I think he just hit me up and, like, and then we did, like, one or two. I can't remember, maybe street interviews or whatever we did. And they always invite me back. And then, like, a lot of the times, it's just like, they're like, here's the pitch. And they're like, what character do you want me to play? And usually it's like the racist white guy or something. Mm. Like, they usually like, don't say that, but they're like, yeah, yeah. it's expected. Play like a rich, <laughs> preppy white guy for yeah. Toronto. Like a conservative white guy. Yeah. Exactly. Wagwan. Exactly. <laughs> the spelling oh, bee was so funny, yeah. bro. Like, that would have had to leave for a show. So that's why I left halfway through. Yeah. Oh, you okay. left when it was when Long Tendo was there. Yeah. That yeah. was like planned. Because I was like, I had to get to a show. Yeah. Oh. Perform music, actually. It was uh, a <laughs> at Comedy Bar Danforth with Jared. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah. And there's so like yeah it'll be like that sometimes and like sometimes i'll like get out early on purpose mm. like i'm like oh i want the content but i'm also like these shoots shoot long mm. like they're f not them in particular but even that Toronto smasher pass i swear that shit was all day mm. like they just loafing people waiting for people to arrive yeah. this that mm. then you shoot and then they pause everyone's getting drunk you're yeah, like yeah. honestly i gotta f out of here <laughs> yeah um, yo, speaking of getting out of here, we're gonna wrap up in a bit. I think we've been, yeah, almost an hour and a half. Oh wow, this was Jeez. one of our longest ones, right? Honestly, one of my favorite episodes, bro. Like, I, I don't think I've laughed this much during an episode, <laughs> and I feel like uh, I, I'm always laughing at dumb shit. But you, as like genuine funny uh, guests, you are definitely up there. So. Disclaimer: 100%. It's all comedy. That's just cringe, Kev. It's got for the disclaimer at the end after you know, it was already cheese. You, 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 still, <laughs> you can't listen to the beginning for the 38 people that watched, you know? <laughs> for those uh, watching till the end, all 10 of you. Uh, no, it's all like, I always got to say that because like, <clears throat> cringe Kev is saying fucked up shit for your own content. Uh, Kevin mm -hmm. cares about world peace and freeing <laughs> Palestine and all that stuff. So love, peace, unity. I like that. Uh... Where can they find you? At Cringe Kev, right? At Cringe Kev on all platforms or your local Kev H facility. Make uh, sure y'all bump Extra Chromosomes. Extra Chromosexual. Extra extra chromosexual. chromosexual. The, the album's uh, called Spectrum. And um, <laughs> yo, we're dropping a Christmas track. We're doing it. Yo, yeah, doing yo, we we literally have, we just need you on a verse. We have the verse, like we have both of our I'm verses in, on in, it. I'm we have in. the beat. All I want for Christmas is some milk and coochie. Let's go. Jeez. <laughs> well, this was episode 11 of Wave and Muzzy on Burrow Sound here at B3 Studios. It's DJ Czar. Natural Wave, episode 11 with Kevin. Let's go. Jeez. Let's go. Shout out Wasta Sauce behind the cam. Until next time.